ATR. There you go. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. So, here we are. Welcome to. Oh, what the fuck? Why is it not loading? Okay. That was just weird. Okay. Alrighty. So, welcome to James Makes. I'm here to make a stylized tree. This will be our reference for today. I grabbed this and this looks pretty good. I think I will try my best to emulate this. And this basically is a way for me to uh, do creative stuff and put stuff on my portfolio. And for this like two months, I will be trying to work on my game environment portfolio because I want to be a game environment artist. That's always been my one. I wanted that job. So I will go ahead and get started. So first things first, I think the easiest thing to do here is the, uh, the base. It's literally just a box. I also have here a Pomodoro timer to keep myself sane. Um, I've reviewed a few uh, reference material for this specific style. Typically, the AAA quality stuff, they uh, work with a fairly low poly count, but not exactly. They, they, don't, they don't worry about poly count as much. Like back in the day, they used to, but nowadays, you can have, you can have a pretty high poly count on anything, really. So it's, it's kind of overrated, but it is still industry practice to do it, to have a low poly count. Uh, but typically from what I saw, they usually range in around like a one level of subdivision kind of like In terms of the density of it. But for the most part, this should work for the base. I mean, it's very crude, but I think it should be enough to just sort of get started. And then the tree itself, uh, it's a very fairly simple looking tree at least. So we don't really have too much trouble on that end. Uh... I think I'll also model flat for now because it is a slightly bit easier to look at things in a flat uh, way. Also tells me where the polys are at. Uh, in this concept, the tree goes like that. And then it like, I guess this birds. So I'm gonna do some creative liberty and I'm just gonna like route the tree out so like here here and then there and then it goes like out like that maybe so something like that yeah and I think that should be good alrighty There you go. Okay. Uh, I guess I can work on these. This is connected to the geometry, so I have to have some way of connecting all this. Um, that seems to be pretty integral to this entire look. Everything is connected to this mesh. So I need to figure out a way to make it so that it's connected. I might actually go out of subdivision because I do want to get this root sort of going. Hope you guys are doing well. I guess this is already a mini podcast of some kind because I often like to talk when I'm working just to keep my brain a little bit occupied because a lot of the times the big reason why I don't do this stuff as often as I should is because I just, I don't know, there's no motivation for me to do so. And that's not good. Luckily now I have a, you know, 
pretty strict regimen that I'm following to keep myself in track. And I've learned a few things. I, uh, I started learning Spanish and Japanese, which is pretty good. I learned a few sentences, started learning the numbers, and today I'm trying to figure out how to make the, uh, what do you call it? Like, statements you say when you're eating food, you know? And describing words. So, like, this is, like, big. This is expensive. This is something, something. So, starting to try and learn those. Okay, I think I'll do, I'll do one, two, maybe a small one at the very back. I don't necessarily have to model the back, but I mean, I might as well. If I'm going to be putting this much work in, I might as well. Because I've seen in some works, what they do is they limit the view of the camera, which means that you can't actually see behind the model. And oftentimes it saves them some time and also increases the density of the texture so that it's actually, you know, it looks nice. Um, but I want this to be fairly game ready. Like if you were to plop this in the game engine, it would work pretty much outside the box. I'm also planning to release this. Uh, maybe, uh, actually, no, I'm probably not going to do that. I was about to say I should release this as a uh, CC0. I think, okay, here's going to be the deal, okay? I'm going to be releasing this as a CC0 model as soon as I find my uh, environment artist gig <laughs> or a job, basically. Once I do that, I'll release it to the public. I think that's fair. And as long as I get what I want out of it, because here's the thing, I love CC0 assets and I love public domain. The only problem with it in terms of professional works and portfolio stuff, I don't know if this is true. If, if you want to correct me, then please correct me. But uh, typically, you wouldn't want your work to be out there on the internets, uh, especially if it is public domain, because that usually means that you're just kind of, you know, you're giving stuff away and anyone can sort of use that work and potentially make it their own, which is a bit of a shame. But that is the world that we live in. That's not how the tree looks. <laughs> this is easily not how the tree looks. Because we're so we started from here. Okay. And oftentimes, you know, they just don't give you credit and it's just it's just not fun, you know? It's not very fun. And I wish that people have the common decency to not do that, but technically it allows them because that's what CC0 is. It's literally for everyone, right? Public domain. So I think I will only give this out, all the assets that I'll be making and James makes, once I think I have a job. And if it is like a freelance thing, once I get permission from them to release it, basically. Okay, let's do that little root over there. Man, this is going to be a bitch to unwrap. <laughs> this is going to be awful to unwrap. I just realized it. Damn, I'm fucking extruding like a, like a dumbass. All right, let's do... I want this root to go, like, on the ground. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. I like that. Okay. I also wanted to get back into, not get back to, but want to get better at painting. I did say um, a lot of the stuff that I'll be talking about these in this channel, I already sort of briefly talked about in my secret podcast channel. Um, I don't think anyone, not a soul, should know about my secret podcast channel. But we'll see. Maybe it will, it will get to somewhere, but... So far, I think I looked at my analytics. I think there were four views on that video, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Four people 
or bots, most likely bots, clicked on my video and just looked at it and was like, yep, didn't comment, didn't do anything, which is why I'm thinking it's most likely bots because I don't think, like, you know, the video was very much like a motivational shtick thing. Uh, it was primarily just a video log. It wasn't supposed to be motivational, but it could be considered like self-help motivational thing. And I was like, yep, that's interesting. YouTube algorithm. I don't know who got served up that video, but whoever they are, I hope they found some use for it, maybe. Okay. Uh, also, uh, we're already 10 minutes into the video, so I might as well talk about uh, how I got this picture. Because I think it's also very important, to, for, for, just for transparency. Uh, yes, if you already had an inkling on what the image is, yes, you are correct. This is an AI image. Cancelled, cancelled, oh my gosh, I can't believe you would use AI artwork. Look, listen, I personally have tried uh, AI art when it first came out and nowadays. And I can tell you with 100% confidence, it's not even close. It fucking sucks. <laughs> I talked about this on my, uh, on my podcast channel, actually. But basically the gist of it is, AI art is just not good. It's good in certain things. For instance, this. I think this is pretty good. It has some flaws, like this route doesn't make sense, so I'm just gonna try and figure something out there. But besides that, the, the actual composition, how it looks, it's okay enough where I can actually make something from it as a reference. In terms of actual professional work, that's why I'm using it. Because it doesn't really have that, like, human polish. And no matter how many freaking iterations you do, it's just not gonna get there. It's gonna feel weird. It's gonna look weird. From my experience. I think a lot of artists also see this. I think um, I even said, I don't think I said this in the podcast, but I've been talking about this with, like, my brother. Because I was, you know, uh, diving into this AI stuff when it first came out. And I was just like, yeah, it's like, it's okay. It's okay and it's like, job, but it's like, not good. It's not very, like, expressive. It's not, like, it, it's not very flexible. It can't do certain styles, like, very well. It can't do them, like, at all. Uh... It's very reliant on human input, which if you're going to be like adding that much work into it, why not just learn how to freaking draw or like learn how to do like 3D model? Because now there's no like, text to 3D models. And I saw the model. I'm like, that shit looks like ass. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, bro. It looks so bad, bro. Like... I saw Andrew Price showing that, and I understand. This is also the same argument that the AI bros say. That's like, oh, it's gonna get better. Watching like, in like five, ten years, I'm like, yes, it probably will. Okay, it probably will get better. But that I really would hinge on the bet that it's not gonna get that much better. You know, like. I know that AI is like powerful. Hell, I've used it. I know what the the capabilities of it are. But as of the current state, and I can see in a fairly distant future, AI art and AI in the art industry in general can just be a bit more like specific. Like it's only really affecting like, I'd say the biggest one so far are the concept artists. Obviously, you know, if I was actually looking for, like, work, professional level work, 
before I had to go to a concept artist and I had to ask them permission and I had to make sure that you know I can use this on my portfolio that kind of thing uh and with AI art now being pretty good at making generally okay concepts it's not great but it's like it's workable then a lot of the times the uh concept artists are the ones who suffer from that and you could say that i am contributing to this problem yeah you can you can totally state the fact that yep you are contributing to this problem because you're using ai art to make your own artwork totally i i completely understand it i don't think uh you have anything you, you, i don't think you're thinking anything wrong about you know stating that but i think this sort of thinking can be a bit dangerous in terms of how art is made in the first place because hear me out right i think if you use art in any capacity and you consume art in any capacity at some point or another you have stolen something from an artist it doesn't really matter where you got it from but as long as you made a piece of art at some point in your life it probably was from someone and hell professionals do this all the time it's called reference and if you gather enough references you pretty much can make something that's totally your own right like close enough to being your own and the only issue with that is well i don't know what influences i could have potentially have had Sure, I can tell you, like, oh, I'm inspired with this specific piece from uh, this person in ArtStation that I forgot the name of. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll add the links in the description of the, the reference material. I'll just go through my history and just uh, copy-paste it there. But I looked through ArtStation. I went through a bunch of, like, professional work. And I practically just took away all of the things that I felt like are you know what makes their style great and you know the human touch that adds to their pieces and now i just need to work on something and hell i can even push this one step further if i say look at mid journey and analyze how mid journey does its composition its colors which often is a lot like very cinematic, very like contrasty. Um, if you don't look at like the jank in like certain details, then you know, like composition wise, Mid Journey is pretty legit. I can take that aspect of that artwork and then use it in something else for my art. It's practically the same thing. All of it leads to me making artwork, whether or not it is made by a human or made by AI. It's all up to the artist to make sure that they are using AI in a very, like, pro-artist way. And I'd say, I'd argue, that what I'm doing is fairly pro-artist, right? Sure, it might be antisocial because, hell, all you had to do is ask an artist to, you know, for permission to, to make their work. Hell, sometimes you don't even need to ask for permission. Like, but me personally, especially if I'm going to add this on my portfolio, I don't think I want to, you know, I don't think I want to be A, bothering an artist's precious time because... He probably is busy with a bunch of other commission work, especially because a lot of the references that I get are most likely going to be like at least in the industry. So they are obviously already had their jobs. They already 
are busy with whatever they're doing. So I cannot possibly like waste their time telling them, "Hey, can can I can I use your your artwork for for my my own work, please?" Like, please, you know. Like it might just be me. I think it's just purely me being lazy. If I'm gonna be honest with myself. But uh, yeah. Also, the AI art itself, as you can see currently, I'm making a bunch of changes on it. Cause it is just not. It's like I'm. I'll keep reiterating this for anyone who thinks that I'm. Like, I think that AI art is good in any way. It's not bad. It's not good either. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's so bad in a lot of ways. It's only really good and, and like, arguably good at, like, certain things. Like, see, look at this fucking branch. That shit doesn't make sense, right? Now I have to adapt to that and I have to now think of a way to make that make sense. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, I don't think AI art is good in terms of a professional level. Like, it's just not, it's just not there yet. So anyways, I think that I've rambled on enough with AI art. And uh, I hope you guys are still watching this. I rambled for like 10 minutes. Um, I'm going to be ending this recording session soon because I do need... 25, I do like a Pomodoro technique where I work for 25 minutes and then I take a break and then come back to it. It's a very good way if to just sort of uh, make it not just bland on your eyes. Is that even a sentence? Like it's like just a way for me to not get bored of the work and give myself some breathing room to reevaluate what I'm looking at because... I can be short-sighted at times. Okay. I think we're going a little too small. We do need big, medium, small. We have already have this as our basis for small, so I think we'll we'll add that to our yeah. Yeah. We need this to be fairly thick. And also, again, we're not worried too much on poly count, even though you're supposed to as just a practice, but don't worry. I was even planning on uh, adding a sculpt on this, but in sort of League of Legends, like environment styles, they typically don't really need normals. Like, you can, you can sculpt it for to make it easier, because if you sculpt it, you can make materials a lot easier. But overall, you don't really need them. Okay, we'll do. Okay, so far, uh, it's a bit difficult to see with all the branches and stuff. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just copy paste this, and then I'm gonna make the bran the, the 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 leaves right. So we're gonna make a little thing here. Also, uh, if you're still watching this, whoever you are, let me know in the comments. What do you think of uh, AI art? Like, do you think uh, it has any chance of replacing humans? Or do you think it's pretty much n only gonna get to a point where it's like, eh, it's mediocre at best kind of art? Because I personally think that it can get to a point where you know, uh, like skills will become obsolete, but I don't think I don't think I'll be alive at that point. I I think that's a a future a future generation problem. That's that's not gonna be me. In my generation, I think I'm gonna be fine, right? There's also probably gonna be more regulations when it comes to AI, which is good. I think it's a lot better for us to be protected and to make sure that you know the artists are taken care of because artistry is a job and we don't want people to lose jobs just because a robot can now do them 
Uh, it kind of reminds me. I'll probably go on this rant later, but kind of reminds me when computers were actually humans back in the day, and now that there were machines that can do computers' work, uh, the role of being a computer, which is like a job title, is now gone. So you're basically like you're laid off from that point. That's like automation replacing an entire workforce because computers were a, were a pretty sweet gig. Because, you know, you want to make sure that you can compute stuff really quickly. You need computers. And now that a machine can do them, why would you need human computers, right? So, I don't know. I found it interesting. Because it might get to a point where, you know, artists will get replaced by AI, but I don't think it's anytime soon. And if it is, most likely humans are going to intervene because that's what we do. We, we look for something that's better for all of us. We don't, we don't just sit around and not care about other people. We want to care about everyone else because that's what we do. It's starting to sound like a freaking... Like Morgan Freeman or some shit. Alright. Uh there you go. Okay, so that's the timer. I think I'll be right back and we'll continue on with this modeling process. Okay, I'm back. Alright, five minutes again. And uh okay. First of all, the ground looks like shit. <laughs> I need to make the ground a little bit better from just what I saw initially. Uh, earlier, what I was doing was I was just writing down more sentences to learn in Spanish and Japanese. I'm trying to learn um, what are you eating and where did you get this and also I am eating blank. And once I learn those, I think I'm I'm pretty good in terms of eating in like a in an environment like that. So that's uh, pretty cool. Okay, so obviously the ground is way too small. And here the sides are like pretty big. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh make it way bigger. Yeah, there you go. J uh Alright, that's a little bit better. That reflects the size a little bit more. I will say the prominent root now are gone, so I think I'm going to have to adjust the ground to it. I'll take some creative liberties. I don't want it to be a fully square thing. I can, I can make it like a... whatever. I'm the artist here, okay? It's my world, which is kind of, you know, the whole point of artistry. You can make your own world in your own hands. That's kind of the point. Alright, now let's make this root a bit more big. Because now I can make it like thick. Big chunk, right? And then... We'll do... Uh, I'm not liking this. I think I'm just gonna stick to like regular like pointed roots because that shit looks like ugly. I think I can I can like make it like thicker at the very end as like just a style choice, but that's about it really. Like that's the most I'll do. I'm not gonna do that like ugly looking thing. AI jank, as they like to say. Uh, let's see. Man, I should have like a list of topics when I'm doing these. Because since this is going to be a podcast thing anyway, I might as well. Because in the, in the secret podcast, it's uh, it's very much like on the cuff and also just what I'm feeling at the time because 
obviously I need to to sort of get my head in a headspace where it's like, oh, I'm talking and I'm making sure that everything I'm saying is coherent. I'm also trying to prevent myself from saying like filler words, which is what I exactly did just some mere seconds ago. For instance, like. I say like way too much. I say ah. Uh, I heard it so many times when I was doing the podcast. Also, by the way, for anyone who has listened to the podcast, which is very unlikely, but if you had, I am so sorry for the audio quality. I was not doing proper like podcast procedure. And what I was doing is I was moving around and the mic audio was just awful. It was not working, brother. It was just so bad. So I apologize for anyone who is doomed to listen to that. I swear I will make it better. Um, I'll probably do that in the next episode and apologize because, my God, it was just so bad. It was just awful. Like, why? Thank God. I was also thinking of making clips while I was recording. Jeez. If I did that, I would have just ended that channel completely. God damn it. I, I, I don't know if I talked about this. I think I talked about this on stream. But holy fuck. The worst thing about a video, right? The worst thing about a video. I don't give a shit if your video is 144p. If your audio is bad, holy fuck. I cannot watch it. I don't know why. It's like... If you have bad audio, it pisses me off because it's like, man, why, why, like, like, it's also sort of counterintuitive because if you did have good video, why the fuck is your audio terrible, right? That doesn't make sense. Anyways, I'm gonna, like, lose it. I'm gonna muck lose it. Because sometimes I'm, I'm, like, so confused because, like, why on earth? Okay, I think this is pretty good. Uh, if I shade this smooth, that looks like shit. <laughs> this look does not look good. Uh, let's, uh, I can probably mask it. Can I mask it with textures? Probably. Let's look at it from rendered. Ooh. Ooh, that does not look good, brother. Ooh, that does not look very good. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to make this slightly better because this shit don't work. This shit no worky. Uh, does this work? This doesn't work. Why does it not work? A lot of the times with this low poly modeling shtick, it's oddly a puzzle <laughs> because you have to figure out how things, how it would shade certain, like, parts. And kind of just have to, like, figure out a way so that it's smooth, as, like, smooth enough to work on. Obviously, the, the, the clearer solution is to just increase the subdivision. But typically, if it's something like this, see, like, this is already too dense for my liking. Like, that is way too dense. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this edge. There you go. Like, this, this, like, tentacle root is way, way too dense. It does not need to be dense. Actually, I need that for the round here. I'll remove this. There you go. And just sort of balancing out the mesh. Adding one here just to smooth it out. Maybe let's smooth out this. And there you go. Nice. Uh, I think I'll make a bump here. A little stumpy boy. I think that was what I wanted out of this anyway. I don't think I just emphasized it enough. This is what happens when you take breaks, everyone. 
you see things that you wouldn't see unless you took that break. So take breaks when you're t when you're drawing art, uh, or when you're just doing art in general. Don't like try and like do everything in one go. That will burn you out instantly. And also, it's not gonna be as good. So take your time, and also uh, take breaks. You want to make sure that you can make the best art possible. The only way to do that is to make sure that your brain is working the best that it can do. Because if it's not, you're making dog shit art. End of story. <laughs> like if you if you can't think straight, I'm telling you, I already don't have a brain. So if you uh if you remove breaks out of that, you're just done. There's nothing you can do. Okay. Uh, let's do... Okay, the leaves here are, like, big. Like, like very thick. I think I want that to go through here. So I'm gonna... Oops. I selected something. Uh, I'm gonna quickly... Do something here. And just sort of adjust the sizings of the tree leaves. Obviously, currently the uh, the look of it is definitely very different from this, which I think is good. I think it's actually you know, like it's not good in terms of professional sense because this means that you can't follow a concept. Like, hey, maybe you should follow the concept, uh, and not go off of the artist's you know work. But this is not an artist. This is a machine. I don't give a fuck if I don't if I don't match to this, okay? If it's an actual artist, I'll will I will match to it. But also, yes, I probably should match to it regardless because it's just an important skill to have. In fact, this is, was a problem with my last uh my last gig. I was trying uh I was I was given a task to make something out of concept. So basically it's like a freelance gig and I was tasked to make this thing into the character that they had in the concept. The problem is they have a very limited concept and I had to work with what I had. And so I got to work. I spent around five days working on this character. And when I sent it in, they were like, yeah, but it doesn't really look like the concept. Can you make it again? And I'm like, fuck, okay. By the way, keep this in mind, this is a dog shit contract. <laughs> this isn't the typical 50-30-20, which is 50 up front, 30 in the middle, and 20 at the end. This guy is basically just gonna, you know, going, trust me, bro, and it will give me the money at the very end. Dog shit contract, would not recommend. But anyway, I made this character again. It took me a little, a little, bit, a little bit less time. It's like... 20, like, I think not 20 minutes, like, two days, right? And then I, I sent it in, and then he was like, yeah, but it still does not look like the concept. I don't know, bro. And at that point, I just gave up. I ghosted him, and that was out of it. <laughs> like, like, uh, you're not paying me enough to freaking care about this this much, okay? Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. The proper way is to probably say that, hey, I think I'm just going to quit on this concept because, you know, I, I'm not getting paid, like, directly for this. Because if I, if, here's the deal, this is also the reason why I do a 50-30-20, is because if I can't do it, I'll just refund the money. That's the end of story. There's nothing, nothing to it. But, he didn't do anything. He didn't give me any incentive to keep going because I'm, I'm not, I'm going to be real. As long as you've given me the money, I would have worked on it for a fucking month. Because I've been burned before where I spent pretty much like over half a year on something only to get paid peanuts. And I was like, man, I don't want that. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> so I, wa I want at least a reasonable amount of pay. And also... I want to make sure that if I am actually going to do it, that there's proper, that there's proper budgeting. Pay your artists, everyone. Don't fucking skimp on that. I don't know why people are skimping on that. 
AR is not going to be here anytime soon. So, just pay your artists well. Okay. Alright, this is, I think, good enough for uh, texturing. I'm going to have to unwrap this. This is going to be a pain. Oh, I need to save. Uh, I'm going to save this as... Um, environment Portfolio 2023. There you go. November 17, tree. Okay. Unwrapping time. I'm planning to make all this in one texture, but I don't think that's possible. So I think I'm going to make the tree and the ground in a separate texture. There's also some bushes here. So I'm probably just going to make like alpha stuff. So image, new, 1024. Uh, and then I'll, I'll do no alpha for now. Actually, yeah, I will. I will do alpha. And then we'll do green. In fact, I'll just sample it right there. There you go. And then this will be the ground. Nice. Now when we go to texture. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> okay, it's not that. Ah, right, because I didn't, uh, I didn't make a material yet. Whoops, that was stupid. Round, there you go. Now we have that material. Let's add a new material here. And now I can go in here and I can add tree. I probably should also have a texture for the leaf, but I don't care. It's probably going to work fine. Uh, and then, let's just grab this. This is why a reference is really good, because you can just sort of use that directly. Okay, there you go. Now we have the paint set up. Let's just unwrap this thing, because this thing looks horrendous. Look at that, freaking UV. Okay. Uh... Okay, I'm going to, shit, I actually don't know how to do this properly. I probably, what I should have done, I'm going to duplicate this, I'm going to separate it, I'm going to unwrap this, go here, uh, separate these leaves, and then I'm going to separate it. And I'm going to unwrap this, like, on its own. So far, it looks like shit. So I'm going to just do some unwrapping. Uh, I think this will be the easiest one. Uh, Arxium. Okay. I think I can also just unwrap from here. Uh... Let's see. Does this work? I think this will work. Like something like this. Mark seam. I don't know if this will work. But it does it does make the, the patch. Because I do want to separate these. And then Mark Sam. Probably just remove this. And then. Mark Sam. Sam. Remove this. Unwrap. Man, that dog is barking like crazy. I don't know what the fuck he's doing. What is he barking at? Freaking clouds? It keeps keeps barking. I don't know if you can hear that in the back, but the dog, uh, our dog is barking like crazy. He's so much of an indoor dog that he literally barks at any noise that happens nearby the gate. So if there's like a motorcycle that passes by, or if there's like a, if there's a freaking a bike with a bell on it, like any sound that goes in that like near that gate 
instantly he goes nutso. This is why I wanted a cat. Like, I don't really like dogs. I'm not a big dog person. Like, it's it's cool. Like, I like like I like dogs in terms of just how cute they are. But god damn, they have so much fucking maintenance. Like, a cat is just like it'll just stay there. Sure, it can meow, but like a lot of the times it'll just leave it alone. Like, it's not it's not very like hard to take care of. It's like fish. It's like a, it's like a cuter fish. Like, I don't I don't give a shit if it does something stupid. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's not gonna be, like, too noisy. I could be completely wrong, too, because... I have heard of certain cases where, like, cats just do not stop meowing. So, could also be the case. Also, what the hell did I do? <laughs> uh, Unwrap, there you go. I don't think I don't know if this is correct. I think I'm doing this awfully, but we'll see. We'll see like a few minutes more down the line. Man, I already spent thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. That's crazy. Uh, let's do here. Uh, I wanna separate these. Uh, Mark Sam. Mark Sam. Mark Sam. Nice. And then the roots. These big boys. Oh yeah, right. And they also have this part at the very bottom. I forgot to remove. There you go. Mark Sam. Uh, I don't think I'm. I don't know how the fuck I'm gonna unwrap that. Uh, let's do this. Mark Sam. Mark Sam. This one. We'll see. Unwrap. Nope. Unwrap. Okay. It's not too bad. Looks like shit. Especially this part. But overall, not bad. I'll probably trim this. I'll trim it like there, maybe. Mark Sam. Sam. What the fuck? Wait, what? I guess I should have done edges. What the hell? Unwrap. Okay. Looks alright. Um. Actually, it doesn't look alright. It looks horrendous. <laughs> it looks <laughs> looks like an awful unwrap. Uh. Okay. Well. Ah. Fuck it. Whatever. It's probably fine. Let's check it with a UV checker. Uh. Pack the islands. Okay. Actually, we probably want to pack the islands like a bit better. So add a big margin on that. There you go. Okay. So uh, let's check it with a UV uh, thing. Thing of a jig. Let's do holy fuck, he's barking the shit out again. <laughs> what the hell is this man barking at? Uh UV grid. Grid. There you go. Okay. Um 
looks pretty good. For for how shitty the UV unwrap is, it's it's all right. It's all right. Okay. And let's also unwrap this guy with this guy. And then uh we can actually probably shrink this down a bit more. There you go. Yeah. That that'll probably work just fine. There we go. Okay, so we have a minute left. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm also just gonna ensure that this unwrapping is nice. Uh, for a box, I don't really know. I think it's like just this, right? You just take the outer edges, mark that as a seam. Then you take like a corner, mark that as a seam, then unwrap. Okay, that, <laughs> that does not look very good. Uh, hmm. Fascinating. Uh, I'm gonna fix this even though my break is near. I'll finish this and then I think I'm taking my break. Okay. I think, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna... I'm gonna mark a seam at the, every corner. That should probably work. Oh, get to the window by accident. There you go. All right. I mean, that looks like a shitty job, and it most likely is, but hey, look at that guy. UV. <laughs> look at those UVs. All right. I'm going to take my break. I'll be right back. Back at it again. So, we have our ground, and we will now uh, start painting. The fun part, or the painful part, depending on which one you like. Uh, I'm gonna more, I'm gonna work on the ground first because I think that's easier. Uh, just to get this ground, I've worked on ground stuff before, so I think I'm good. And uh, let's do it. I'm probably also going to make external meshes of this just to make it look nicer, but we'll see. Um, I do need my pen tablet, but I think what I'm going to do, I also just noticed this, is I can use my my screen tablet as a pen tablet. Like just a regular, uh, like just regular tablet. Um, I'll try it for this. If that doesn't work, then, you know, I'll just move back to just a regular screen tablet and i'll probably just work fine um and luckily since we do have a reference i can just sort of use this as a as my reference here wait how do i how do i color pick Shit. <laughs> how do i color pick on texture paint color pick texture painting Blender. S. I see. Okay. So I can use S to sample colors. Are you sure you're sampling the right colors there, mate? <laughs> There you go. Ah, okay. So it was it was referring to the it was referring to the outside of it. Okay. Start off with a low strength. Just to sort of block in the general shadows. Let me just pretend like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh I don't know, bro. Just fucking paint. Just like you'll you'll figure it out. Painting's fun. Painting's the, the fun part when it comes to this stuff. It's like you just gotta experiment. You gotta figure it out, man. You just you you you're, you gotta you gotta find what you what you enjoy and what you like in painting. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's all up to the artist and what what he likes in the piece and what he wants in the piece. You know, I don't know why I have that voice. I think it's my like 
moppy, jokey, uh, motivational speaker voice. Because I'm not gonna lie, I think motivational speeches in general, they are cool. I just think some of them are a bit eh, and just bordering the cringe. So, that's why I typically make fun of them a lot. Like, I know that their their work is probably pretty important, it's just that, you know, sometimes it's just funny. Um, okay, let's just, uh, let's block out the shapes. I could, uh, I'll try doing, ah. I was gonna do, like, the shadows first, the, the base of shadows, but I'm gonna just do what I usually do, which is I, I block out how the rocks are gonna look. And then after that, I'll flesh them out later. So I'll just paint these rocks like that. I was also thinking, I had this idea in my head of how this can be faster. Where I can take that actual image. I can project it on this. And then use that to basically make up most of the texture now i'll probably try that just that as an experiment in another time but for now i think i'll just stick with traditional you know traditional is good enough i think i can work with it there we go okay A lot of the times in painting, and this took me a while to figure out, but it really does take time. It doesn't really matter, like, how good you are. If you're good, you can do it faster, but at a certain point, it's like exponential slow. Like, it, it only gets slightly bit faster the more you paint. And it just kind of comes down to the reality of the fact that it just takes time. Painting just takes a bunch of time. It doesn't matter. As long as you want it to be good, it doesn't matter. It will always take so much more time than it probably has the right to. And you know what? You just have to enjoy it. Enjoy that time. Enjoy the amount of time you're working on this piece and, you know... Who knows? Maybe uh, it'll actually come out good and you had yourself a fun time. Also, my arm is starting to hurt. Uh, maybe this workflow is not good where it's me using this as a pen tablet because I am used to a pen tablet setup. I've worked with a pen tablet for like years before I got myself a screen tablet, but yeah, that's why I'm fairly proficient at making the shapes. But besides that, not much. I'm also not being very varied with my sizes. There's no mediums. Only big and small. Which is very bad. You're not supposed to do that. Okay. I'm so used to Krita now that when I do Control Alt and it doesn't color pick, I'm like, brother, <laughs> where's my color picker? Also, I probably should be painting on full screen. When I was doing the shorts for my YouTube channel, uh, James Games, and I was trying to make the TikToks. I realized that I was modeling in a like small ass screen and I was like, brother, why am I like this? I just made it so much harder <laughs> to edit this freaking video. And at times I might even have to re-record it because of how shitty the the viewfinder is. I don't know why I do that. So many things in YouTube content creation. That, like, you take for granted. Like, for instance, I've always wondered this. For anyone who does vlogs. How the fuck do you guys do B-roll? Because 
God damn. Do I hate filming B-roll. <laughs> I remember trying to vlog before. I'm like, what the fuck? I just realized that these vlogs have like a shit ton of uh, B-roll on them. And I cannot be bothered to film B-roll. <laughs> so like, how the hell? How the hell do these people do it? Okay. Uh... I think I need to just sharpen up the shadows at the bottom because they are absolutely not looking nice. They're looking mighty, mighty bad. <laughs> looking awful. I probably should also set my viewport to match this. So it's a little bit easier to see. My arm is definitely getting tired, holy. My arm is getting tired. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's pick out this bright color here. And let's just... Let's establish the light. Uh, the light's coming from this way. I do want it to look like this. like So it's like lighted this way. So I want all the light to come in from this side of the thing. Everything else will be shrouded in shadow. This will probably be shrouded in shadow as well, but whatever. I won't worry about that. We'll worry about that later. There we go. Go. Uh, let's do lower strength. I think I'm painting way too fast. It's starting to look a little too, a little too ugly. <laughs> I know it's supposed to look ugly at the beginning, but damn, um, goddamn, it looks like ugly. A little too much, too much ugly. Okay. I wonder what happened to, uh, to Colleen. I don't know if you guys have been catching up with, uh, Art YouTube. You probably do when you're watching this video, but there's this YouTube channel called Colleen, and he used to make these meme ass, uh, meme -y videos about critiquing people's art. Because she's like a professional artist or whatever. And she got cancelled over uh, her like calling the uh, like a character that doesn't follow like Japanese style like faces the, the, the normal procedure. Uh, like a monkey or something, a gorilla looking something. And, you know, that's a bit, like, rude, I think. <laughs> that's, I don't think, like, I know that the the whole point of the video is supposed to be a meme, but, like, goddamn, brother. Jeez. Like, you gotta, you gotta chill out. I don't know. Uh, I don't know where I was going with that. I was just sort of curious what happened to her. Um, let's see. Okay. Do a shadow here. Do a shadow here. I'll, I'll just, I'll just put the shadow where it needs to be. Right there. There you go. OK. 
go. Okay. Uh, I think that's pretty good as a base. So we got most of the, the, the blocking done. I think I'm not that happy about it. It's like, it's a slightly bit too, like, blocky, Warcrafty look, but I think it will work fine enough for now because I just kind of need to get this out of the door. Uh, I'll, I'll try to improve it later on just as a to reminisce. But this is where we can, like, actually start fine-tuning the details on this. Uh, I can even probably just go full opacity on this. Because this is where you just paint. And this is where you start to define the forms, as they say. Not very good at painting, if you can't already tell from the thumbnail, but... I'm trying to get better. I want to get better at some point where, you know, I can work at a studio that I like. That would be the dream. If I can work on Riot Games or any studio, really, that does game development, I can get a steady income from that, and I'll be happy. If I can do commission work in this level as well, uh, hell, I'll be fucking happy with that. I'll be mighty fine indeed. Um, I'm not liking how the, the creases are looking. I remember watching the Cassante speed painting in YouTube, basically the, the splash art. And I don't know why, but that music is now stuck to my head, and I cannot unlisten to it. <laughs> it's like that, oh my, yeah, oh my, yeah, something like that. And I'm like, god damn, that shit's a bop. Also, I just, I'm so scared, I'm gonna save. <laughs> I just uh, realized I haven't saved in a fucking long time. Uh, I'm gonna just join here. Join here. I'm just gonna keep this in mind. And then... There you go. Okay. Alrighty. Just to make sure. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. Probably like 8.8 .8 here. It's a nice shape. In 3D, it's very strange because you basically have to, like, almost paint in as if there's real geometry in there. Which is a very trippy process. It's like, you're trying to make it look like there's normals there, even though there isn't. So you're trying to convince the viewer that, yes, this is how, it, this is how the geometry looks, you know? It's a very strange workflow, but I, that's why I like it. Like, it's like trickery. It's like magic. This is why I wanted to work in this field. It's like so... It's so weird how your eyes... Because your, your eyes just kind of want it to work. Your eyes convince yourself that, yeah, yeah, like, this, this is how it's supposed to look. This is how it works. It's like, a, it's like a, an optical illusion, which is so cool. Uh, 
Okay. Looks pretty cool. Move to another part so that, you know, everything has an equal amount of detail. You want to sort of jump around the painting. I've seen that a lot when people paint. They don't spend painting in one place, even though I literally just did in that one section. But typically what you want to do is you want to be painting all over the canvas so that it's an equal amount of work throughout the piece and it also makes it a lot more even allows you to sort of make the overall piece more consistent i love how this is just taking probably gonna be an hour of work which is gonna be a lot but uh hey that's art for you takes time it's no joke that's why it's a job it takes time Again, if I would have been smart, I probably would have tried to project the image, the reference to this, but whatever. Especially because it's an AI image. That's also an advantage with an AI image, since it's technically no copyright, because any AI image is technically in that realm where it doesn't have any copyright, so you can't copyright it unless you use it uh, in a like a fair use case, which would be in this case would work, but I want to hone my skills. I want to be better, not just rely on images. Because that's usually what I'd probably be doing if I actually got a reference from something. I would try and stick to it as much as I can. And obviously, I mean, what better reference is there than the actual image itself and just use it as a way to. Like, be more accurate, you know? It's also important to look at it from a distance. In fact, I kind of want a viewfinder. Let me, uh, let me load up one here. There you go. Just something to look at from a distance. I can see it and then go flat. There you go. Just so I can see it from afar. So I don't need to even pan. I can just go and look at that. It's also very important in terms of work uh, to optimize your workspace because if you're Taking so long on doing something, usually it would lessen your motivation to work on it even more, which ends up you not finishing it. So usually if there's something that, you know, you need, then just do it as quickly as you can, then get back to work, right? That's usually how you're supposed to do it. Okay. I'll shade it in the shadows later. I think I'm just trying to shape up the rocks because the rocks are a bit, a bit too loose, loosey goosey. I also noticed that I think it's also because I'm talking that I'm not listening to music. Usually I'm listening to music when I'm making art. So I'll probably, you know what? I'll do something. I'll do a test, right? In the next episode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just post a time lapse of me finishing this tree. And then at the end, I'll probably add like commentary of like, there you go, there's the tree, there's the model, or some shit like that, right? So I'll do something like that and see which video does better. Hmm? So if you guys like these commentary videos, if you've been watching this far, which is kind of crazy, consider liking this video, you know? Making sure that I know. That hey, you like this content, 
you you want more of it? Okay, I'll I'll do it. So make sure to leave a comment, uh, like this video specifically, and if you don't like the other video, then you know that's fair. You like what you like. All right, I'm actually liking how that looks. Uh, let's see. I kind of want to work on the tree. I'm gonna do one more. Uh, I'm gonna do like a few more passes, and then I think I'm gonna move to the tree. Yeah. So far, observation so far, the lines on it are way too thick. The the, the separation between the the things are way too thick. So I'm gonna have to, you know, I'm gonna have to tidy that up. But besides that, everything's 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 fine. Okay, it looks it looks good enough, which is kind of uh useful to to have in your mind. It's like it's good enough for now. Let's move on, right? You gotta you gotta accept that at times to just be like, yep, looks good, good enough for now, and. You just have to move on afterwards. Okay, we're about to end our little session here. I was also trying to learn Japanese in the background when I was taking a break. So, trying to use my time efficiently. So far, I've noticed that uh, Spanish is see, a whole lot easier to learn so far. Okay. There you go. Five minute break. Be right back. Welcome back. Uh, I've decided that I've moved Blender to the uh, tablet screen now. So I can actually paint on the screen. So hopefully it's going to make it better. Maybe it's going to make it worse. I don't know. I think I'm getting bored of the, the, the ground. Let's paint the tree for now. Uh, I'm going to need the. Uh, Shader. What? Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> blender being Blender, I guess. Okay. Uh, texture paint. Let's just sample this. Uh, pretty dark color. Bangaruski. And now, let's sample this very light color. And I do need the wireframe for this so I can see what I'm doing. Opacity, just tad. I don't need to see it that much. I just need the form so I can actually start shading it properly. There you go. So the light's coming from this way, so I need to light it that way. Uh, I'm going to lower the strength. And I'm gonna uh, fuck. There we go. Go. I'm gonna just limit it here so I can get the painting, the, the light of it. Almost forgot that it was five minutes. I think my 15 minute break is upcoming, which is good. It's always good to have uh, when you're doing the Pomodoro technique to do the 15 minute break just so that you can get a real good break in there and just sort of do whatever. So. I might even end the episode here. Uh and I might do James makes like once I finish the model, but Yeah, you know what? I think that's a good idea. And it'll make sense because uh you know, I'll do the experiment where I only post the time lapse and see how well that does, right? So, I'll be posting this video 
and then I'll see if uh, if that one works better. If it does, then that means, you know, I'll probably stick with that. Otherwise, I'll stick with this narrating style. It is fun. I think it's just, like, you know, it can be a bit tiring at times to talk. Even though for someone like me who loves to talk, I, uh, you know, sometimes get tired. So. There you go. Okay, it's also a bit bright. My tablet screen is a bit, like, dim, so I need to, need to close my windows. There you go. Much better. I can see it. Holy fuck, it looks ugly. <laughs> Instantly when I look at it. Holy, now that I can see. Oh my god, this is awful. Um, Turn off the wireframe. There you go. Okay. Not too bad. Uh, I think I'll start texturing it now. It's a pretty good starting off point, not gonna lie. Uh, I'm gonna... Grab just the bright ass colors. Not that bright. Maybe a little more yellow. Okay. And let's get to painting. Alright, 20 minutes to paint this thing. It's more like a rooty kind of tree, right? So. I kind of want to accentuate that with the forms of this tree. So I kind of want this to be protruding. Uh, something like that. I want like a hole as well. That was a big thing in the uh, in like the little image. So I'm gonna make like a hole here. There you go. Nice. Uh Actually no 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 no. I'll only do that at the like the rim here. Right there. Probably should have like a, like, I watch Dicko a lot, which is an Australian Blender YouTuber, where he does 3D modeling and animation stuff, and he does this thing where he has music that sidechains with his voice, so every time that he talks, he, the music sort of fades out. I kind of want to add that to these videos, if I ever continue this narration style, and if it does perform well, then I'll do that. Okay. Ooh, I actually like that how that looks. Okay. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna do thin lines first. And then I'm gonna shade that in. So far right now it's not as like veiny as I want. You know, I like I like to make the true trunk a little more veiny. There we go. You know what? I'm gonna do something a little crazy here. I'm gonna blend this in. Holy. Actually, it looks pretty good. Like, no cap. 
probably copium, but no cap. <laughs> In my eyes, it looks a little bit better. That's like... Look at that. And then... Let's do that. There you go. Looks good. I actually like that. Something like this. I want to see. Man, I'm so excited to see what my progress is going to be from this tree all the way maybe to like next year and see how much I've improved. Cause I'm gonna be doing this every other day, which is a fucking lot. Like, it is a, I mean, it's not a lot to a point where it's like, oh, it's your job. Well, it's not my job yet. I want it to be my job, and that's why I wanna practice and I wanna get better. So, currently, just trying to get this going much as I can. So far, I mean, the block out is doing pretty good. Also, by the way, this is just a quick reminder for anyone who is still watching. I'm not going to be doing uh, texture paint all the time because this month I am because I want to get better at it and We'll see how that goes, but I want to also do animation. I want to get better at animation. I want to get better at uh, sculpting. So I want to start sculpting. I could sculpt these, but I kind of want the environment art, this to be my constant. Like, oh, this is what I'm good at, right? This is like my shtick. I like doing this style. I like doing uh hand painted models right that's my thing uh so i think i'm gonna i'm gonna leave sculpting for characters i would love to learn how to sculpt characters because holy that would help so fucking much on actually making characters just look nicer because <laughs> my characters look like dog shit currently so i just need to i need to be better at characters in general and what better way to do that than with sculpting? And the sculpting allows you to see the forms in literal 3D space. So if you understand how they work in 3D space, most likely you can implement it on 2D. So I wanna I wanna be able to do that. And uh that's why in for my next year's goal for my painting, I want to be able to do uh a riot level painting like it's something that they would put in their game kind of painting uh for league of legends if i can make a character from scratch and make it in the quality that riot does them i would be happy with the skill level that i have because to me that's the peak if you can reach that uh i think that is literally the best that I can do. I don't think I can do anything better than that. That's in fact that's a lot of people's like dream goal to be able to paint like that. If I can do that, then that'd be the dream. I don't really care what happens. I'm I, I would consider myself a pretty good painter at that point. Pretty good character designer, just all around. Better in every uh metric because at that point, I've worked on creative stuff for so long, I would have been, I would have just been able to do whatever. Also allows me to make games better. So that's also helpful. So that means my quality, the quality of my games are going to be substantially better. Of course, the quality of the games that I'll be making next year are going to be a mixed bag because I'm only, I only have a year really to work on 30 games which means i only have about 10 days realistically to finish a game right so that's uh 
That's just how the cookie crumbles, I guess. Which is why I told it in the podcast that this challenge that I'm doing, 30 games in a year, is really stupid. Because it's probably going to end up just like bad games. Like, even though I want it in my heart to be good games, obviously, there's no fucking chance that you're going to make 30 good games in a year. There's just no way. But there is a chance. <laughs> there is a chance. As long as I push through it and I, and I work my ass off, as if my life depends on it, then there is a chance that I can do it. And if there's a chance, I'm willing to take that gamble. Also, I just realized I don't have my pressure sensitive. Whoa. Wait, what? My pressure sensitivity doesn't seem to be working. Alright, on second. Tablet. Wind tab? There you go. Nice. Uh, softness. Nice. There you go. Finally have a nicer... Actually, I mean, I can't really tell. <laughs> Man, that's so hard. Uh, why is it so hard? That's what she said. Let's do pen tablet. Where the fuck is pen tablet? There we go. Uh, pen settings? Yeah, my... Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think I set this the wrong way. Windows Inc. Okay. Alright, that's slightly better. Slightly better. There we go. It's a little more adjustable. Alright, I'll take it. I do need pressure sensitivity for certain occasions. And for roots, it's uh, pretty important. Have pressure sensitivity. Because you want nice, nice lines. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to shade this tree. Because there is already this sh I like shadow casting here. But, I don't know. Actually, let's check in with the rest of the artwork and see how well this looks. Look at it from here. <laughs> looks like shit, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, let's remove the specular, because it's often... Actually, not the specular, the roughness, maybe? a little bit specular. Also, I'm still using 3.6. What the fuck? I just realized that. <laughs> I'm still using 3.6 not 4.0 for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, okay. Pretty good. I'm gonna change this as well. There you go. So I just realized that when you zoom out, you can see, like, the white edges. That's a bit cringe. I hate that. Okay. Looks, uh, interesting, to say the least. Um, let's do more painting and hopefully fix it. This time in rendered view. I'm gonna, I want to see how this looks in rendered view, you know? Whoa, oh, I'm painting on the rocks. Whoopsies. Uh, save all images. Okay. Uh, let's paint on the tree. I 
I think I need to actually just shade the tree. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually just shade the tree fully. I think that'll work. Also in the concept, it's just a circle. There's actually no hole here. Ah, you know what? I actually like that. I like that idea. Something like that. And then not mm. Because the smear is like for blending, but I think I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that for now. And I, I'm just, I'm just gonna paint the the stuff here. So I do need to paint this stuff. I'm not gonna skip over it. Cause I think I'll I'll bake the lighting in later. Which is kind of what you're supposed to do anyway. You're supposed to paint everything and then lighting will come after because what you're trying to do is to just uh, essentially put a base on it you're not actually painting on the light unless if it's in specific circumstances in this circumstance it will work if i paint the, the light on it but i think it's just more optimal if i just paint on the traditional way where you just paint everything yeah I want to connect that to there seems fun this is the fun part about painting you kind of just can do whatever Okay. Hey. Oh boy. This is a lot. This is a lot. You know, I was wondering to myself, man, this is probably not going to take that much time. I'm going to just be able to finish this in like maybe three hours. Well, we are approaching the second hour, and I'm already getting sick of this piece. <laughs> Which is kind of the point. Uh, yeah, yeah, in art, a lot of the times, you're just going to get sick of your own work uh, a lot of the time, and you just have to push through it. This is the hardest part. The hardest part of any painting process. And you, if you just push through it, You'll be able to make amazing things. It, you have to push through it. You have to. Because currently it is 2 minutes, 3 minutes before my break. Okay. In fact, the timer is sort of uh, an incentive. Because it's like, oh shit, I only have 3 minutes. Okay, I gotta, I gotta work on this before the break. You know? It motivates you to, to work on the stuff more. But it has to be enough time to actually get something substantial or else you're just going to be... You're not going to do anything. 25 minutes to me is my sweet spot. If you need 30 minutes to make something, if you need 40 minutes, go for it. Pomodoro also is not the only timing technique. There's a lot of other techniques that you can use for boosting your productivity. I don't really know the other ones. I just know that Pomodoro works for me. So that's the one that I stick to. 
you know any other ways to manage your time let me know in the comments that'd be very useful for me actually because learning new techniques to make myself a better like work like, just to have better productivity would be nicer i sort of now understand why people are so obsessed with self-help because uh it's one of those things where it's like yeah like it is very uh soothing in a way to work on yourself like yeah i'm I'm doing something good for myself and it's uh feels good you know feels real good because you know that you're actively working on yourself to make yourself better Alrighty. So far, I'm, uh, I'm okay. It's, uh, it's a little bit rough right now, but, uh, it's, it's definitely getting there. This is a one veiny boy, so it does need a lot of shading. Lots of, uh, winding loops and whatever the fuck. Oh. Okay. Let's see. Uh, let's do the branches. I hate the branches because they're so fucking janky to work on. So I just I'll I'll, I'll do it for last, which is right now. Six seconds. And big break. All right, I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back in fifteen minutes. Be a long break. I'll I'll learn some more Japanese. I'll be right back. Actually, wait. I forgot. It was supposed to be my my complete like done for the day shtick. All right. Well, that's about it. That's it for this episode. I worked on this. Um, episode two will come out shortly, and it's gonna be the time lapse. So I hope you guys enjoyed my little talking sections and whatever. If you guys like this then make sure to subscribe comment down below what do you want me to work on next like an environment what do you want and uh i'll see you guys uh the next episode take care